everyone. Um, I am going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we can have this meeting because the governor says so. We can have this meeting just on Zoom because the governor says so. Everyone should know that people outside can see your screens and anything that you're broadcasting. So be careful what you're showing. Uh, and um, if people have questions about the materials, um, they're available in Novus. Uh, so we start with public comment. Uh, I see someone whose name is Blaze Sharon. Uh, if you're here for public comment, can you raise your hand? Your virtual hand. Okay. I'm not seeing a virtual hand raised and I don't see any other attendees. So I'm assuming there is no public comment. Um, so now we go on. Uh, Dr. Holman, do you want to uh, talk about the position that we're here to approve? Sure. So typically it is not um, a practice that I would like to have happen very often that we're bringing a job description to you at this point in the year. Uh, and as we're thinking about launching a new school year and a new budget cycle. However, I've been in conversations with the Thompson team since last year and all of you about the class sizes there and the fact that they are spatially constrained. Um, and Ms. Donato has been thinking a lot about whether or not she wanted to take over another space in the school. Uh, the multipurpose room is used for PE classes that are often doubled up. So there would be more children than can fit in the gym if we were to take the multipurpose room to use as a classroom. The music room would be another option, but then you're moving music through the school throughout the day, which can be really disruptive to classrooms nearby. And the more she sort of weighed out her options, um, the more she really thought it would be best if she had four sections per grade level. So that's what they have moved forward with in planning for this year. Um, I am shunting any buffer zone students who come into that grade two away, but Thompson's buffer zones make it a little harder to do that just because there's not much of a buffer zone on the hardy side because of the pond. So, um, so this role is coming from me asking them, what additional support do you feel would be the most useful in addressing what are some larger class sizes, particularly in grade two, um, but also at grade one. And they spoke about that at length. They talked about whether they would like an additional social worker. They talked about an additional SPED liaison, but they have actually added a couple SPED liaisons over the past couple of years. Um, and didn't feel like that was the immediate need. This is the position they came up with. And it's instead of, for example, what we've done in the past, which is adding teaching assistants um, to the to grade levels where there are larger class sizes. And I like this better than adding, we are adding a teaching assistant at Thompson, but I like this as well uh, better than that because I would always rather have licensed professionals, particularly dual licensed professionals, which is what this requires. Uh, working with our students and teachers. So essentially what this role is, this inclusion specialist role that's in your materials would be a dual licensed individual would focus their attention on some of our lower grades where there are larger class sizes at Thompson um, and is there to work directly with teachers and provide additional support in the classroom from a licensed professional where and when it is needed. Um, they might do longer cycles if there are particular student needs that require that with one teacher in one section, they may drift between sections. I would work with Karen on a design for how this uh, would be utilized and we would track some data over the course of the year to see if it's a useful role to have in the system. Um, this is a role that we've considered in the past and that actually Allison has some funds in um, special education to consider doing for district level as well. It's one that's been on the the proposal block for the budget, but that hasn't made it to the final proposal that has come to all of you. So it is something we've thought about in the past. It's just not something that has come directly to you. Um, I'm happy to try to answer any other questions for it. Karen would have been here, but she uh, has been spending some time with family this past week. So she'd be better equipped to answer questions, but I can, of course, bring any back to her and answer them. Um, the reason also that we're bringing this to you in a meeting now virtually is because she has some folks she thinks could be potentially interested in it, wouldn't want them to start in a classroom with their students and then switch to another role and have to backfill the teaching role. So we'd love to post this swiftly if we can. Also, uh, this has been shared with Julie Keys, and we've made some revisions based on some feedback from the AEA. I'll stop talking and take any questions. Okay. Anyone have any questions? 
Raise your virtual hands or real hands. I can see everybody pretty much, I think. Okay, I see no hands raised. Um, I'll ask a couple questions. Uh, Liz, what is the, uh, Dr. Holman, what is the um, class sizes that we're talking about for grades one and two at Thompson? Yep. So I don't have the draft rosters that they have in front of me. I have the enrollment report that I sent to all of you, I think last week. Right now, class average size in kindergarten is 20. Um, class average size in grade one is 22.5 and average size in grade two is 24.5. Okay. Um, and could you just very quickly walk us through like a day in the life of this teacher and how they would be interacting with the students and, and um, especially with grade two where the class sizes are large. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine this person would be attending uh, all of grade two, say ACE meetings and doing planning with the teachers, which is where a lot of the planning happens. During that planning would probably be making a plan with the teachers to either take small groups. They could take small groups from multiple classrooms. For example, if there was some need to have additional reading groups at that grade level, um, they could, if there was a space available, take a group of students to do an add-on to a lesson from a curriculum, for example. If there was, I mean, they, we have reading interventionists and math interventionists, but when you have bigger classes or class sizes, sometimes you stretch that resource a little bit. So this person could step in to provide that kind of support, or they could be in a classroom with a teacher for a whole day if there is a particular set of student needs that requires some more intensive support uh, in that particular classroom. It's similar in concept to coaching, but it's not meant that way because it's supposed to be directly student facing, but it is sort of a support for teachers where they need it on instructional things that are happening at the moment. So there's some flexibility for assignment. And that's part of what I need to work out with Karen is to make sure that um, she has a clear sense of what this role is and is not doing so that it's not useless and it's not just a substitute. Um, it is, if, if they work closely with grade two also, which they should be, if one of those teachers were to be out, it provides a far more seamless ability to backfill um, an absence in that grade where they're working closely with them. But I wouldn't want this person to be somebody who subs for whichever teacher is out. That is not the intent of this role. Uh, it is the intent of this role that they are working closely with those first and second grade levels. Also, they'd be doing some, we have SST teams at Thompson and they would be working tightly with the SST team, which is a team that when there are concerns about a student gets together to talk about the concerns, look at the data surrounding that and come up with a plan for addressing whatever it is the learning challenge is. So they might be involved in implementation of whatever the plan is that comes out of SST. Okay. And you had mentioned that they might do small group pullouts um, if space was available. And I'm just wondering where would the space be and is there actually space available? We've been trying to do more push in small groups. It does constrain the space of the room. Sometimes that doesn't quite work, but you could also, if you said, had say five different reading groups that you wanted to provide some level of intervention or expansion to during a reading block, you could have one classroom have two groups in it and then the other classrooms have other groups in it and you can and we've been working on getting the elementary schedules a little more blocked so that say everybody's doing reading at the same time because that gives flexibility for additional service providers to put groups together from two classrooms into a different space but the more of that push in we can do i mean it says in the job description that the goal of this is to keep students in the classroom more so i would imagine small groups in the classroom more often than pull out but if we did need to do a pull out, um, sometimes the multipurpose room is free. It's relatively rare during the day at Thompson, but there are times. The library sometimes is open, so you can pull a small group into the library. Um, they have a couple other small spaces they've made by cutting some classrooms into small intervention spaces that, that could also potentially be used if it was needed. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any other questions, comments, concerns? I don't see any hands or any thing. Okay. Um, so can I have a motion to approve this as presented? 
So moved. Second. I didn't hear who it was second. Is it Liz? Oh, that, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So the motion was made by Mr. Thillman, seconded by Ms. Exton. Any further discussion? Uh, okay. All in favor, this is a roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Morgan? Yes. Uh, Mr. Thillman? Yes. Ms. Exton? Yes. Ms. Gettleson? Yes. And I will also vote yes. So that passes uh, five zero zero. And I think that's everything that we have on this agenda. So uh, barring that, we are done and we will return on uh, August 30th, I think. Is that yep. right? Yeah. OK. Uh, Ms. Fernandez, I forgot to first introduce you and, and also see, did you have anything you wanted to, to say about this? No, uh, okay. sounds good from our end. Thank okay. you. Okay, so that's it. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, motion to adjourn by Mr. Thielman, uh, seconded by Ms. Exton. Uh, voice roll call vote, Ms. Morgan. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Can't hear you, Mr. Thielman. Uh, yes, sorry. Yes, can you hear me okay. now? Yep, carry him now. Yep. Okay, Ms. Exton. Yes. Okay, Ms. Gettleson. Yes. And I also vote yes, and I declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.